Bible reads like this, and seek ye not, or seek not ye what ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, neither be ye doubtful minded. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. In other words, they're going after the stuff. And your father knoweth that you have need of these things. See, God knows you need this stuff. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. Notice that, but seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things, all this stuff you're running after, God said, I'll add it unto you. I'll give it to you if you'll put me first. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Praise God. Let me tell you something. The kingdom of God is bigger than an earthly kingdom. Amen. You can live out of it or you can live out of this earthly kingdom. I, I choose to live out of God's kingdom. Amen. So we're going to be preaching a message today that's entitled Make a Kingdom Connection. Make a Kingdom Connection. When you, when you uh, connect with the kingdom, of God will give you what's in it. And you know, the Bible says it's his pleasure to give you the kingdom. Some people have never uh, experienced any much out of the kingdom, amen, because they're just after, uh, you know, the they, they, natural way of getting things. I'll tell you, God's got a method of getting things, amen, a spiritual way of getting things, amen. It's called the blessing of the Lord, amen. Listen at this. The other day I was listening to Brother James Payne uh, while he was preaching, and he said he went to a, a little country church one time for a revival. He said, I go to big churches, I go to small ones. He said, while he was there, that the pastor and his wife wanted to take him out for lunch. So during the lunch, he said that the pastor of that church slid a check across the table. Uh, it, it had a, his, whole, his whole month's salary was on it, sewed it into the man of God, sewed it into the prophet. Brother uh, Payne said this, uh, he knew that that pastor that, of that little country church couldn't afford to do that, and he tried to get the pastor to keep it. Amen, he knew that they probably needed the money worse than he did, but the pastor refused to take it back. He, he knew that he was connecting into the kingdom principles. Amen, the kingdom. Everybody say the kingdom principles. He was connecting into the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. And uh, he, he knew that if he sold into the prophet of God, amen, that the prophet's anointing would come upon his life. So he took advantage of it. So he sold into that prophet's life. And uh, by sowing into it, he was asking God to do something for him. He, he, he was sowing a seed toward his need. And he was going into the kingdom to get it. He was making a kingdom connection when he sowed that seed and he asked God for a house. Hello? Some people say, well, I wouldn't ask God for a house. Well, I would. If I, did, if I need the house, I'd ask God for a house. So Brother Pang finally, he, he took the money even though he didn't want to, he knew that he had to. He took it with him and for days he said, I couldn't deposit it because he knew that pastor probably needed that money worse than he did. Amen, but after a few days, God began to deal with Brother Payne. He said, he, he told uh, James, he said, if you don't sow that seed, if you don't plant that seed, it'll never bring a harvest. Amen, God told him to deposit it, so uh, he deposited it in spite of how he felt. You know, there's times that people have sown into my life, people have sown into the church, people have sown in the radio and television at times that I knew I needed it worse than I did or worse than the church did. But you know, I found out that I can't refuse the seed because if I take it and I plant it, come on somebody, amen, I'm, I'm putting it into the kingdom and when it's put into the kingdom, they're gonna receive things out of the kingdom. So Brother Payne accepted the check and after a few days, God began to deal with him, said take that check, deposit so it can bring forth the harvest. And when he did, everybody say when he did. He did. Eight months, everybody say eight months. Eight months went by. Amen, eight months went by and one day Brother James got a call from that pastor who had sold that month's salary. 
He told Brother James, he said, Brother James, he said, there, uh, eight months ago when you were here, eight months ago when you was here, there, there's a man in our church, he's a house builder, and he, he happened to be in that service, and the house builder a few days ago called me to come and, and look at, uh, come to a house that he had built, and he is assuming that uh, the, the house builder wanted him to come out there and, you know, pray that God would help him to sell it and, and so forth. So uh, he said when he got there, him and his wife showed up and walked into that house, said it was a beautiful house, said it was two baths and a half, said it had three bedrooms, it had a two-car garage. Hey, man, the wife and the pastor walked around in that new house, and they was like some of us have been in, in our past, walked around in that house looking how beautiful it was, smelling that new carpet and seeing all this beautiful uh, laid out rooms and all. He was walking through the house and him and his wife, uh, they said, oh, how nice it would be for one day us to own a house like this. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Amen, Brother James said so. That pastor and his wife closed their eyes and began to pray to God and said, God, will you bring the right people to this house? Bring the right people into this place, those who, uh, you know, who, God, you want to live in this house. Bring them out here and let them get this house. When they opened their eyes, there stood that man that built the house with the keys in the hand, big tears running off of his face. Somebody say, kingdom connection. Anybody believe that? I mean, I was walking around this morning. I, I was thinking about this. You cannot convince me that you cannot, cannot sow a seed and get the favor of God. Right, right. Amen. They, some of you knows what I'm talking about. We've worked these principles. Malachi 3 says, when I sow, God will open the windows of heaven, pour me out a blessing. I won't have room enough to receive it. Amen. Bible said, if I'll give, it'll be given unto me good measure. Amen. Everybody say, you've got to be a giver. Give, and it'll be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto thy bosom. The Bible teaches me that when I give, come on now, God gives it back to me 30, 60, and 100 fold returns. Come on, somebody. I've come to tell you this morning, you will never convince me that sowing the seed won't get the attention of God. Well, when that pastor opened his eyes and his wife opened her eyes there, that man stood crying. And here's the words that come out of his mouth. He said, Pastor, he said, eight, year, uh, or eight months ago, I was sitting in your church. Brother James Pangs was there. And God moved on my heart. God spoke to my heart to build this house. It took him eight months to build it. Amen, but he said, Pastor, he said, God spoke to my heart and told me to give it to you. Somebody ought to give the Lord a shout right now. Somebody ought to give the Lord a shout. How I many, come on, somebody ought to give the Lord a shout right now. Some, somebody ought to give the Lord a shout right now. Some, I'm going to obey you, Lord. I'm going to obey you. God told me to tell somebody ought to get up and run around this building right now and claim what you're believing for. Somebody who's believing God for something, amen, praise God. It might just be one of you. I don't know, but I'm telling you, God told me to tell somebody who's been praying about stuff, you need to get up and show your faith by moving on it. Thank God. Somebody give the Lord praise. Amen. Praise God. He might be probably be the only one. Just watch. Thank God. If you'll live right, God will bless him. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, well, some of y'all missed it right there. God said, I, I was going to do something, but they refused to listen. I hope God will move back on you one more time before this service is over. Before I get through, I ain't saying much more. You ought to have done jumped up and run around this. Well, I don't feel good. That has nothing to do with it. It's releasing your faith. Amen. This, this man of God said that God told me to build you a house. Listen, when that pastor obeyed the instruction that God gave him, to saw a whole month's salary. Now, this was an uncommon seed. This is an uncommon instruction. Amen. Praise God. And uh, God, when he, when he was putting something on that man's mind, something in his heart to do, God had something on his mind to move on somebody else to do. 
while God was moving on his heart to sow his, a month's salary, God was moving in the same service that night to have a house builder to build that man a debt-free house. And the thought came to me this morning while I was meditating and praying on this service, the Lord spoke to my heart and let me know this, that if that pastor had of not obeyed that un, uncommon request, this man had never done that before, if he had not obeyed the Holy Ghost instruction, that man, God would have never spoke to that house. How many knows it'd have to be God to speak to a man's heart to build you a house? Well, the same God who was moving on that pastor's heart to give a month's salary, amen, God was moving on the builder to build him a house. And eight months later, that I know that seed that he sowed that day wasn't big enough to pay for a house. Somebody say amen. amen. A month's salary would never buy a house unless you're a millionaire, billionaire. Come on. Just a common poor man took a step of faith. Stepped, oh, I felt that holy. Stepped out into the unknown. Stepped out into the spirit realm. Stepped out by faith and said, God, I'm going to obey it. I, I've got to obey you. And even though Brother James tried to get him to keep it, amen, he, it, in, he insisted that James keep it. So he connected. How many believe you can make a Holy Ghost connection? I've done it. Amen, I, I, that's my life, amen. Everything I've got comes from Holy Ghost assignments, Holy Ghost connections. When God moves on my heart and tells me to do something, amen, and I know it's God, and I don't care how small it is. There's been times that God has told me to sow small seed. There's been other times God said give 10,000. Amen, whatever God tells me to do, amen, God will have me prepared to do it, and I have... I don't regret a dollar of it today. Don't regret a dime of it today. Amen. And God has brought me out of debt and he's blessed me. Come on, somebody. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody wave your hand to the Lord and praise him. Yeah, I wish everybody in here would get a hold to this. Somebody, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's releasing on some of Some of y'all are going to be coming out of debt in the next five years. Some of y'all are going to be plumb out of debt. And your bank accounts ain't going to be busted and Hey Amen, you're going to, come on, you're going to move to a level you ain't never been in your whole entire, somebody ought to be praising God for this. Get in on this anointing today. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. How many like to come out of debt? Well, that's all I hear around that church. Well, go to a dentist office, all you're going to hear about your teeth too. Come on, somebody. Whatever God, come on. Whatever God has a man to preach, you go to a Benny Hinn meeting. You know, you go, I guarantee you know what you're going to hear about. Healing. healing. Somebody say healing. healing. You go to a Mike Murdoch meeting, what are you going to hear about? Money. Prosperity. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. You go to a Kenneth Hagin meeting, what are you going to hear about? Faith. Faith. Come on, somebody. You come to a David Robinson meeting, what are you going to hear about? Prosperity. Blessing. Blessing. Prosperity. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Well, you liable to hear about healing or anything around here. There's an anointing on this house. Somebody lift up your hand and give God praise. You're a part of something that's getting ready to happen in Hickory, North Carolina. Hallelujah. Shut up. Somebody praise him in the house. You better hope you take this home with you today. You better hope you get in on this anointing today. Because I tell you, it'll bless your socks on. It won't, come on, it won't take them off. It'll put them on you. Somebody give the Lord praise in the house. Amen. Let me tell you something. That was the same type of an anointing, same type of a miracle that happened in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the Bible says we've got a better covenant than they do. Ours is based on the blood of Jesus and the, and the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. Hey Amen, he died that I could be blessed, that I could, he become poor that, uh, and become poverty stricken, that I could become blessed and rich in him. Somebody shout amen, hallelujah. He, my Lord, he, he, he become a curse that the blessings of Abraham could come on me. Well, the same anointing that was working on the woman's meal barrel in Zarephath 
is the same anointing. It was in the kingdom. Amen, that anointing come out of the kingdom, that blessing come out of the kingdom. Amen, she made a kingdom connection when she sold into that prophet's life. God, oh, somebody hit me. The anointing on that prophet come on her meal barrel. That anointing on that prophet come on her house. And, and she had plenty to eat through the famine. Her meal barrel, oil barrel did not run out because she took out of her need and sowed into the prophet of God. That pastor sowed into Brother James Payne, amen, and tapped into the anointing that was on James Payne's life, and God brought that preacher and his wife a debt-free house. So I'm gonna tell you something, if I had a need today, I'd find me some type of seed. Some of y'all didn't even grunt then. This is so foreign to some of y'all. Some of y'all, is probably the first time you ever heard such a thing. It's the best thing you ever heard if you'll take a hold of it. The Bible said, as long as the earth shall be, there'll be seed, time, and harvest. You know why we're here today? Because of a seed. A man put a seed in his wife, and she conceived and had a baby. Amen. reason we're alive today, because of seed, time, harvest. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. People planted corn, and corn kept growing. People planted tomatoes. Tomatoes are still growing. Somebody shouts, see, time and harvest. God put this thing. He set it up, and the way we live today is through see, time, and harvest. We can talk about, amen, sowing uh, for corn, sowing for uh, apples and so forth, it don't offend nobody. But you talk about sowing for, for somebody to get saved, sowing the radio or television or church. Oh, it just offends the devil and his crowd. Come on, somebody. Oh, I'm telling you, all oh, they want your money. Well, that's all Walmart wants. Go to a ball game and spend 30 or $40, get a ticket to get in, buy popcorn and all that. Oh, they want your money. You don't get offended. Go to a wrestling match. I don't know what they charge for that. And, hey, man, but all they want your money. They don't want a picture of you. Just come on, get your money in here. Come on, get your ticket. But in church, if you mention money, you're a thief, you're a, you're a con, you're trying to get something from them. Honey, I thought myself over this morning, I thought, God, you know my heart. I'm going to get up there this morning, I'm going to preach it in spite of everything that these people in Hickory, North Carolina throws off and... I don't care what they think. God knows my heart. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't need your money. I've got plenty of it. I'm, I'm blessed. I don't need your money. I'm doing this for you. I'm preaching this revelation to you. Somebody shout, come on. I'm preaching this revelation so you can get it. So you can be blessed. So you can bless your children. Teach them that what you give, God will give it back to you. Amen, praise God. Some preachers ain't preaching to get your money. Some preachers are preaching to get you blessed. Amen, some preachers ain't trying to get it from you. They're trying to get it to you. I'd like everybody in here to become millionaire so we can just, anytime a project comes up, anytime a bill comes due, television, radio, somebody say, I got this and I got that. Somebody help me preach. I hope I can get this church into that rim. Can't get some of them here enough to get it. Come on, somebody, help me preach. We got to get this. Listen, I'm going to ask you a question. Did you know God cares about your needs? He said, he said he knows your needs. He knows what you need, amen, and it gives him pleasure to meet your needs. Come on, somebody. Amen, you know, uh, Thought came to me the other day about a, a young man in the Bible. You can look it up if you want to and you go home, study it. Amen. One time in the Old Testament, a young man had borrowed something. Amen. Y'all got any borrowed anything lately? Come on, you got any debt? He had borrowed an axe. And while he had it in his possession, while he, he had it, he was chopping a tree and the head fell off the handle and it fell into the water and it sunk it was lost 
And the young man didn't know how in the world he was going to recover it. He had no clue of how he was going to pay for that ax head. Well, here's what happened. Well, how many knows that was a need? He was either going to have to pay for it or he was going to have to get it back. So you know what the young man did? He run to a prophet. Some might say, well, that's not anything to bother a prophet with. He's up there having visions. He's up there having dreams. He's up there communicating with God. Leave that prophet alone. Uh, why isn't it important? It's a need. Somebody shout, it's a, it's a need. This scripture proves that God don't care for us to ask. He don't care for us to ask for our needs to be met, our natural needs. The Bible says that uh, God supplies all my needs. All of them. It's in the Bible. Everybody say all. all. He supplies all my needs according to whose riches? His riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. He supplies my physical needs, my spiritual needs, my financial needs. He wants to meet all my needs. He wants to, me to draw everything out of the kingdom. That's why he said when he's teaching his disciples, pray, pray this prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done where? When we all get to heaven, the pie in the sky, when we all get our mansion in this week, by and by. No, while we're, while we're here on the earth, the Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth. Everybody say on the earth. On the earth. Everybody say on the earth. Get that. On the earth, on the earth. as what? As it is in heaven. Is there any poverty in heaven? Any sickness in heaven? Come on. I tell you, God wants us to be blessed while we're here on this earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants us to be blessed on earth. He wants us to have some days of heaven on the earth. Boy, that just blowed up. Come on. God wants you, to, oh, I felt that. God wants you to have some days of heaven on the earth. Come on, you've had enough hell. Why not a little heaven on earth? Ah, that's good. I'll accept it. Nobody else wants a little heaven on earth. I'll take it, God, any day of the week. Praise God. So this young man, he, uh, he, was, he, he, he was desperate to get the ax head back. So he went to the prophet. And uh, he, a lot of people think, God don't want to get involved in your financial needs, your uh, physical needs, if your car tires up, refrigerator breaks down. Honey, God wants to get involved in everything. If it wasn't important enough to bother the prophet, you know what would have happened? When, when, when the young man came up to him and said, Prophet, I've lost ax head and don't know what I'm going to do. You know what the prophet would have done if it wasn't important to him and God? He'd have said, you get out of here. Don't you know I'm in here talking to God? Don't you know I'm too busy for you? Hello? Don't you know that's not important enough to come in here and bother me with? No. It was important enough that the prophet of God gave him an assignment, told him what to do, give him instructions, and those instructions didn't come off the top of his head. They come from God's heart into that man of God's. Come on, somebody. If I want a consultant, I'm not going to a witchy board. I'm not going to a seance. I'm not going to call those stupid psychics. Come on. No, if I want an ax, I'll call me a prophet, though. I'll call me up, up, come on somebody. I know some real men of God that knows how to pray. And if, come on, if it comes down to needing a prayer, I'll call on one of those men of God and they know how to get it through to God and get an answer. Yes. That's right. Well, that's what the prophet did. He, he uh, got an answer and he gave it to the young man and the young man went and did what he told him to do and something supernatural manifested. Read your Bible. That axe head floated back. Whoo, somebody give God. That axe head began to swim. That axe head, that, that, that metal axe head began to float to the top of the water. And the young man reached in and grabbed that axe head. Come on, somebody. That was supernatural. 
If you don't think it's supernatural, go throw an axe head in the water and, and, and see if it'll float. Somebody say amen. I had never heard such a thing. It's about time you did. Amen, I remember time I was dumb as a rock when it come to the things of God. But I found out God wants me and my family and the church to prosper. Let me let, me let you in on the secret. I, I talk about it all the time because God said it. 3 John 2. Read it in your own Bible. If you don't believe it's there, it's there. 3 John 2. Start reading it. There's just one chapter there. It said that my wish above all things... Now, this is the Lord speaking through John. God was saying, my wish above all things, my wish above all things. My, in other words, my wish of all wishes is that you prosper, be in health. God wants you to prosper, be in health. That is settled right now. Somebody say, it's settled right now. It's settled right now. God said, my wish above all things, you prosper, be in health, even as your soul doth Prosper. Somebody praise him. Glory to God and give him praise. Your souls, get it right here. Get it in your mind. Get it in your soul and you'll get it out here. Well, some of y'all don't think that's in the Bible. You ain't never read it. Well, you're going to be surprised when you find it. It's in there. Somebody say it's in there. I promise you. It's in there. It's in the New Testament over toward Revelations. You'll find it. Somebody say praise the Lord. I tell you, God wants to get involved in your needs. His, his scripture proves that God will, and he does. Amen. When that young man obeyed God's instruction, the ax head that was missing become, it, it floated to the, surface, to the surface where he could reach down and pick it up. That boy's need caused God to release his spirit, his anointing, his supernatural power on that ax head. I mean, that had to be God. Praise God. Many people think God's too busy to mess with something that small. Really? I, I'm going to tell you something. Before I, if I feel a pain coming to my body, you know the first thing I'll do? I'll go to God first. Now, if, if, if I don't get any relief, you liable will see me going to the doctor. Amen. God's got the doctors on our team too. They're doing the same. They're trying to get us healed. Let me tell you, I'm going to try Jesus first. If I have a financial need come up, I'm going to try Jesus first. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. It says to ask. Everybody say ask. And you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be open to you. One day Peter came to Jesus about a need. Guess what it was? Peter, his taxes were due and he did. And, and he, he needed the money to pay his taxes. Not only was his due, Jesus was due. Jesus didn't look at Peter and say, Peter, here I am out here casting out devils, healing sick people, raising the dead, and here you are asking me for tax money. How ridiculous that is. Don't you see I'm just too busy for that? No. Jesus didn't react that way. Jesus told him to go fishing. He said the first fish that you take up, it's going to have money in its mouth. You take the money and pay it our taxes. And I want to point something else, I'd, else out. I'd never caught this till, till this morning. The Lord pointed this out to me. What Jesus told Peter to do to get the money, amen, was something that Peter enjoyed doing. Peter loved more than anything fisher, fishing. He was a fisher when Jesus met him. He loved to fish. And Jesus said, go do what you love doing. Go fishing. Don't mind it at all, Lord. Pulled that fish in. Sure enough, it had the money in its mouth. Amen. There's some critics out there today wished it didn't say that because it just backs up what I'm preaching, that Jesus will take time to meet your needs. 
Somebody thank him right now.